Hey everyone, Kaylee, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist here. Today I am ranking every heatless curling method I have tried on my hair over the last 10 years. Let's get into it. The idea for today's video comes from Natalie on Twitter, and I wanna say thank you, Natalie, because it's great. I have done so many different curling methods over the last 10 years here on YouTube, and I thought let's take a walk down memory lane and rank them based on what works best to what worked the absolute worst. I'm gonna just give you guys some feedback on like maybe what I would do now to fix it, because some of these are like green sheet days, and now I know more than I did and so I could help some more. And also just like which ones you should absolutely avoid and never do. So that being said, let's get into it. Okay, this very first video we have is from the green sheet days. As far as I can tell, the very first heatless curls or waves I ever did. And this is no heat beach waves. Oh, the music. Oh no. I'm gonna need you guys to, to comment if you remember this music. Hey girls, Kaylee here. So today our video is for no heat. Oh, she's talking so fast. Oh, 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 no, no, we need to stop. We need to stop right there. The eyebrows. Why are they five inches apart? Somebody tell me why my eyebrows are five inches apart. All right, getting into the actual method, it looks like I wet the hair first, I did some leave-in protection, and then I did a blow dry gel. All good things, still recommend all those things. Oh, and I did a mousse. Okay, you might not need to do all that. And then I raked it through, got my hair to 90% dry, and then I did one version where I did a French braid, and then I did one version where I did Dutch braids. And let's see the after. Okay, so here's the thing I'm noticing with this one right away is that I started the braid fairly far back on my head, like all the way back here. And so once it falls forward, I do have really pretty waves when I turn my head to the side, which is probably why I used a lot of those clips because the waves started up here really well, but I had really straight pieces in the front. So if I were to redo this, or if I were to do this today, I would start the braid a lot closer up to the front for sure. Let's see this double braid action though. How did that one turn out? Ooh, she got a smoky eye for this one and a big necklace. I. Oof. Okay, so I know some people look so cute when they've double braided their hair and then they take it down the next day. I do not think that is the look for me. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong here. I don't know why it's super crimped in some areas and not at all in others, but I'm gonna say that's a no. Some pros to this hairstyle is that it is really easy. Uh, some of these require a little bit more skill. With this one, you just have to be able to braid. And it looks really good on some hair types. The con is that it doesn't work as well on fine hair and I have fine hair because fine hair is gonna show all of the little kinks and everything. So it's not my personal taste for me, but I do think it looks so good on so many different people. So for that reason, I'm gonna put it right in the middle for now. All right, what did I do next? Oh, this is now the next setup that I had. This is before the blue wall went up and this is titled Easy Heatless Curls Tutorial. Does anybody remember when I had auburn red hair? I went dark brown and then I had to go back through red to get to blonde because it was not the move. Also, how long and thick was my hair? What? So much jealousy for past me. <laughs> okay, so what you'll need, these are old school like bun formers. These were around so much around this 2013 area. We were using socks, we were using bun formers, everybody had a ballerina bun. I'm saying step one is to brush, then use something to add hold because my hair doesn't hold easily. Okay, so this one relies on a mohawk of buns. I'm wrapping it around the bun former and then I'm rolling it down to the head and then twisting it into a bun, huh until there was a whole mohawk all the way down. And at the very end, I showed you how to do it with a bun maker because again, those were very popular. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember filming this video, so I have no idea how this turned out. Oh, that does not look good. The ends are so sad. Oh no. <laughs> it looks wet at the root. Kaylee Melissa, you gotta call it out when it doesn't look good, girl. You can't just like ignore that. No, no, no. <gasps> That is a big frizzy mess. What is that? Kaylee Melissa. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. And Laura. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no. 
That is a... Uh, <laughs> that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. No, 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 no. I love past Kaylee enough to speak the truth. <laughs> okay, so here's why I think that went really wrong. First of all, I don't remember what that spray gel was. Um, I don't know how recently I had colored my hair. Whatever happened, there was way too much hold and not enough moisture in my hair, number one. Number two, those bun formers are like rectangles. They're very skinny and very wide. So it was like folding your hair around a block and hoping it would come out in curls and it didn't. So yeah, that's a no. That's gonna be a no from me reviewing that one. Absolutely no, don't do that. The placement with the mohawk section might work with other rollers, but Bun formers? Heck no techno, we're never doing that again. No, 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 no. I'm putting this one at the bottom, which is currently place number two, but this is, this one's ha. Okay, moving right along. Now we have back to school heatless curls, exclamation point. This one is August. So this is just a couple months after that first one. Man, do you remember hey when everyone, YouTube videos were only three minutes long? Heatless curl tutorial for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am making a pen curl and I am wrapping it up. Okay, and then I'm pinning it in place. So this method is just making pin curls with your hair. This is like a very old school way to do curls. This is how curls used to be done back before curling irons. Vintage hairstylists still do this quite a bit. So this method is pretty good, actually. I don't know how it turned out for me that day. <laughs> I think the only downside about pen curls like this is that they can take some skill to wrap correctly and to pin well because if you pin it incorrectly, you're gonna have a crease. But if you're patient, it's actually a pretty good method. Hypothetically, let's see how this turns out. <laughs> the last two have not been impressive. All right, yeah, it is also key to put something over your head to keep everything in place. That really wide headband was definitely the move. Oh, see, those curls are so much prettier. Look, the ends are pretty. The curls are actually curls. This is our first like successful curl example. Wow, that actually makes me wanna try that again. Okay, okay, okay. Aw, so cutie. Wow, yeah, I like those. I think the only thing that I would change about this if I was doing it today, I'm going back to look at how I set that front pin curl. I just think that that very front piece again needs to be a little bit tighter, but aside from that, I love it. Absolutely perfect. Go past Kaylee. First pro is that it works. <laughs> but the second thing is that you can really determine exactly how each curl falls. So if you want some towards your face, some away, whatever. If you want little curls, big curls, you can do all of that. I think the only real con to it is that it does take some practice to do correctly. But if you put in the time, it can work and it can be really, really good. I'm gonna say, oh, eh, mm. okay. I'm gonna put it right below braids, even though this one looks better than that first braided one that I did. I think as far as actually doing it on yourself, the braids are probably a little bit easier and a little bit more reliable. I'm the rain queen. I get to put things where I want them. That's why I want them. Now we're moving along to October of 2013. I did three in 2013. My hair has gotten lighter progressively throughout the year, but we're to a nice little blonde copper. Oh my God, I'm doing braids again. <laughs> Okay, and this time I'm braiding closer to the hairline. There you go, past Kaylee. I still have that shirt. I love that shirt. All right, let's see how these turned out. Eh, it looks better than the time I did it before. And it doesn't look bad. But can you guys see why it's not my favorite one for me? Like, some girls take their hair down from braids. Like, Anna Laura, she takes her hair down from a braid. Pfft, magic. Mermaid. When I do it, it's just like, just a tiny bit deflated. It's missing that je ne sais quoi, you know? Just, mm. I still really like this method. I still think it really works well for people. Let me know in the comments what your hair type is like and if this braid method works for you. I just don't feel like it works for me. So even though I'm hating on this a little bit, it's still in first place and I'm just stacking this one on top of the previous one because they're the same method, just two different videos. And moving along. Ooh, okay, now we're getting into some new stuff. This is Heatless Soft Curls Inspired by the Grammys. Hey everyone, Kaylee here. So I thought it was about okay. time that I did another heatless curl tutorial. My hair looks and good I was so though. By the My hair was so full in like this 2014, 2015 region. 
And now for the method, I have something new to teach you guys. I'm going to be using a t-shirt to create these curls. So I made a Pinterest graphic for this. I promoted the heck out of this. This is probably one of my more successful videos. Um, and as far as I know, I made up this method. I was sitting there trying all sorts of different ways and this popped into my head. I'm not gonna say it's the best. I'm gonna be real honest, but I am proud of past Kaylee for using her noggin to create something new. So you twist a t-shirt and you put it around into a donut. You put that on top of your head and then you wrap the hair around it. It's a simple idea in concept. However, I have to say, it's a little difficult in execution. First of all, you have to balance it on your head. <laughs> Second of all, you have to wrap everything really, really nicely and evenly around it. And uh, thirdly, you are wrapping everything up to one specific place. So this hair in the back isn't going to start curling until about this far out from your head. I got so many comments about how this looked like an 18th century updo or whatever. <laughs> And honestly, you're not wrong. <laughs> All right, and now I'm taking it down and those curls are beautiful. Oh my God. My hair does look really good, guys. Honestly, I don't know if it was the curling method or that my hair was just like living its best life in 2015, but either way, those aftershots are some of the best work I've done. <laughs> Pro is that it is better than the bun makers or putting your hair in a scrunchie first or trying to do it with a headband. Cons? balancing a halo on top of your head and that I really think there's like no way for it to work on short hair whatsoever could not do it with my hair length and it does kind of create curls that only frame the front of your face so you have to bring your hair down over your shoulders that aside it creates a ton of volume it creates really pretty waves I'm into it I'm gonna put this one I'm tooting my own horn a little bit but I think I'm gonna put this one in front of braids for the current first place position. Alrighty, and now moving on to 2016 Easy Heatless Curls Hair Tutorial. These all have the same title. <laughs> oh my gosh, apparently my hair was still going strong in 2016. Guys. Oh, I remember that. So this is what I used. I love First that. I used flexi rods and these are just kind okay, of like- Okay, so now I'm using rolls. flexi rods. These are really popular in the natural hair community. Um, and they were starting to kind of pop up on YouTube a little bit more. So I decided to give it a try and I remember really, really liking it. I remember this, I tried setting lotion and I had learned a lot about it in cosmetology school. It's kind of like an old school idea, but I thought I'd give it a try. You know, you guys never got the update on that, but after I tried it for a while, it just ended up making my hair kind of feel dried out and like a little bit too hairspray-y, even though it wasn't hairspray. So it wasn't a forever part of my routine, but it was fun to try out. Okay, so I'm splitting my hair into four, it looks like. Brushing everything up. Spritzing here with water, adding setting lotion, and then wrap it around the rod and then twist the rod closed. So this is not too different from the way that the bun makers worked, except instead of like rolling it up at the top and then rolling it down like a sleeping bag, you wrap it around like a curling wand, which is a lot more intuitive based on what we're all used to with styling our hair. Also, this is a cylinder shape instead of a very skinny rectangle which is definitely an improvement. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking it out. It's like in a ringlet ringlet. Okay, so then I'm taking it and I'm breaking it into like little pieces and they look good. That looks like the pin curl method curls, but it's a lot easier than doing pin curls. I feel like these days I might do that with a one inch flexi rod instead of a one and a quarter inch. Okay, so now I'm running my fingers through it and now I'm running a brush through it. I feel like you either rake through with your fingers or brush through. I wouldn't do both. Yeah, I don't think I would use setting lotion now to tame stuff. I like to use like an oil or a serum to tame any fluffy areas. It does such a good job. I remember I was taking a hair skin nails vitamin at the time. I need to look up which one I was taking and do that again because my goodness, my hair looks good. <laughs> that looked great. The only thing that I would change today is that I would not use a setting lotion. I would use a mousse or just any product that's meant for like blow drying that adds holds. Basically anything that works with your hair type. So for me, probably like a volumizing mousse would be a good one. For somebody with a little bit more texture to their hair, I would say something very moisturizing and then maybe like a moisturizing mousse or a curl enhancing gel, that kind of thing. Because this method is more versatile, and I could actually do it on my hair length now. I'm gonna put this one now at the very top. Also, do you wanna see how much I love flexi rods? One sec. 
flexi rod pack. The flexi rods from that video. Give me your flexi rods. And just a couple more packs for good measure. All right, moving right along. Oh, now this is not so much of a uh, heatless hair tutorial as it is me trying out the sleep styler. <laughs> this opens up so questionably. So you wrap the hair away, you wrap the fabric around, and now I'm just giving you a little try. Okay, I just skipped to where all of these are in, and this is like a full cloud around my face. That is so much like bulk around you. Oh my goodness. So I'm unwrapping, taking down what looks to be the third one, and that one is completely wet. Oh my gosh! And then that one that's like second from my face is all kinds of crimped. What even is this? I'm I feel like sure this is the first time you guys ever saw Rage Kaylee on camera. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I don't. What? Ah! So frustrated right now. Did not expect to be Rage Kaylee this morning, but goodness so gracious, it looks people! So bad. I'm still mad about it today. It's been three years and I'm still mad about it. Okay, so I tried it a second time. Okay, so I did better the second time, but there are still kinks in it. It's just not good, guys. No, we've seen enough of this, I think. This was just, it was not the move. Okay, so I just wanted to include that one because like, it was a heatless curl method I tried. I don't think it went well. Mm. I didn't have a good experience with it. If you have, let me know in the comments, but at least for me, it just wasn't the move. I did not like it. It was not it. That being said, I'm still not gonna put it like at the bottom. I'm going to put it underneath pin curls, but above the bun forms because nothing yet has been as bad as those bun forms. That was a mess. Oof, and now we're on to testing weird rollers from Wish. This is, I think, four different heatless curling methods in one video. Let's see how it went. Okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead to the very first one that I used, which were these like plasticky ones. I don't still have these anymore. I threw them away. Oh my gosh, were they terrible. They felt so cheap and so flimsy. The deal with those is that you wrapped them around and then you wrapped them up and you them together and you did that all over your head and then you let it dry. So let's skip ahead to fully dry. Okay, so the first couple ones came off okay. Oh my gosh, and then I remember they got stuck. I lost so much hair. Like I didn't totally film it because I was like mourning and grieving at the time, but like, so much hair got lost to those rollers. It was so bad. Oh no, oh no, that looks so bad. I see myself trying to save it. Okay, so the one side that's curled was okay. The other side, I don't know what happened there. Was it so wet? Oof. Okay, retrospectively, <laughs> I'm not sure how much was user error and how much was the rollers, you know, cause I'm not perfect. I'm not gonna get it right on the first try all the time. That's fair. But um, mm -mm. the little teeth on it grabbed my hair so badly, ripped out so much hair, never tried it again, threw them straight away. It was a big no. And those are gonna go at the very, very bottom of the list. You could not pay me to use them again. And now to the next. Oh, okay, so the very next one we have are these spiral rollers. So this took me, I think, two hours to get all of this in. I remember it was just this like very long, very arduous process because you also had to get the hair specifically in each of the grooves of the spirals. And then I eventually ran out of curlers, so I switched to straws. Then I took it down and I had to do all sorts of finagling afterwards because they were very, very tight curls. If you're um, a natural hair girl, you're trying to recreate how tight your natural curls are, totally great, totally recommend. But for me, um, it was just, they were really, really tight. So I had to use some water to loosen it up. I had to go through and do all this different work. But once I did it, those curls looked good. Like I felt cute. <laughs> I did really, really like these. You could never sleep on them and it takes a while to put them in, but you do get a really good return on it. I think for the spiral rollers, just because you can't sleep on them and they are very time consuming, I'm gonna put them right below pen curls and above the sleep styler. All right, and then moving on, I had the suction cup rollers. I saw them in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel like many of you guys did, and they were used to keep the curls in place overnight. They were not meant to go from wet to dry. 
So that makes a lot of sense, but they were marketed as a wet to dry product. But the thing is because it encapsulates the hair in plastic, it doesn't dry. So I had these in for 24 hours and my hair didn't dry. And aside from that being a little disturbing, it was also very ineffective. So we're just gonna go ahead and put suction cup curlers at the bottom of the list. I think these were definitely, 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 definitely the worst things that I've ever used. Okay, cool, let's skip on to the strawberry rollers. Those are so cute. They're just little sponge rollers basically, but because of the shape, you can wrap your hair around them and it'll just stay inside. So it's not as difficult to do, which I love. And they look really cute. Also, if your hair ever gets stuck, they're really easy to just rip apart. I remember loving these strawberry rollers, so let's just see how this looked. Yeah, that's really pretty. I noticed that the curls are tighter at the top and looser at the bottom. I think because when you first put it on, like you're wrapping that top layer around first and then every other layer is a little bit more after that. And so I definitely got a little bit of an uneven curl from that. And I did touch it up with a curling iron and once that was done, this looked perfect because yeah, it didn't take long to do. It didn't take a lot of heat on the hair. Those were really easy to sleep on and they were so inexpensive. So I really, really liked them. I'm gonna put the strawberry rollers just underneath braids and above pin curls. You know what? We're gonna leave it there for now. I think I might need to reorganize once we're done. <laughs> Moving on to a whole dedicated video on straw curls. Oh my gosh, look at those itty bitty little curly curls. So cute. So this is straw curls heatless faux curly hair. So in this video, I tried out a few different methods of doing straw curls. So I used plastic straws, paper straws, and little bitty flexi rods with kind of like the straw curl style. And I went through all of my hair wrapping these up and then let's just go ahead and skip to taking them out. There's so many tips and tricks and everything in this video. So if you are interested in straw curls, I recommend watching this video for sure. Yeah, so they came off and I can see that my ends are really, really frizzy. I think I was probably due for a haircut, let's be honest, but I should have used more conditioning products for sure. Maybe a curl cream or a curl defining gel just to go ahead and take care of things a little better. I mean, overall, yeah, you get a really nice tight curl. I do like the results from the flexi rods the best because they were the right width. They were the widest of everything that I used and I think that was just the best for my hair. Cause like I mentioned earlier, my hair is fine. So it takes things really literally. <laughs> so it took the curls really, really tight. And then with straw curls, you can't just take it out and go because there's like a whole extra finessing moment to it. So then I go through how to apply product, how to pick the hair apart, how to fluff it up at the roots, all that kind of stuff. Very, very, very important. And then I come back the next day and the curls have fallen a little bit. I talk a little bit more about how to keep them styled. I mean, overall, this is a great and expensive method to try for getting really nice, tight, coily curls. We love curly hair over here. Obviously love any way that we can create that and celebrate it. Um, whether it's training your own natural curls or faking a more curly look for the day. As long as we are giving all of the love to our curly haired sisters, I love it. I find this method really, really easy. The only difficult thing is just styling after you've taken it off the straws. And I provided a lot of info in this video. So I think if you follow that, you're pretty much good to go. It's a very easy method with very reliable results. Straw curls I'm going to put above the braids and below the halo curls. Moving on to 2020, we just got two left guys. We've got, first of all, the TikTok heatless hair trend. And oh, this is from lockdown when Anna Laura and I were filming in different locations. So this one is where you take a bathrobe and you wrap your hair around it. And then you can either leave the bathrobe down or you can tie it up around your head. But that is the entire method. You just wrap your hair around a bathrobe. It is one of the easiest things I have ever tried. And then when you unwrap it, look at her curls. They look so good. I mean, you have now seen a bazillion different kinds of curls. Tell me those are not the best ones you've seen. Oh my gosh. I remember that it did not work out well for me the first time because my hair is shorter. Wait, okay, never mind. That's a really pretty ringlet. Okay, yeah, so I remember that the back looked nuts. Yep. <laughs> so it's like party in the front and just like absolute tragedy in the back. And I tried all sorts of stuff to style around it to make it look okay. 
it didn't quite work. I ended the day with the party pony and we tried again later. So then we both tried it doubling up our little robe tie and I made sure to go straight back with mine. Like I was doing like two Dutch braids and the results I think were much better for both of us. Let me see. Oh yeah, that looks like what I would do with the curling iron. Like absolutely. And it was super easy. And then Anna Laura, little cutie and her freaking retail establishment of a closet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I like it so much more on both of us with a double wrap. So, I mean, I feel like I've gone on a journey now seeing all these different like trending ways to style your hair heatlessly. And that one is still so good. Like it is the evolution of all of these. It's, oh, it's perfect. Okay bathrobe tie is going up at the top. I'm starting to lose my mind. I can't quite remember what I've said and what I haven't said anymore. I've watched way too much hair curling. Let's finish this off with the very most recent one that I made in July. This is my favorite heatless method yet. Oh, that's the title. This is me both trying and reviewing the OctaCurl. So first we tried it on Anna Laura and we braided in each section. We eventually kind of figured out what we were doing and it wasn't so bad. And then I used it on my hair and I wrapped my hair around a couple of sections. All right, skipping to day two where we reveal our curls. I'm gonna take mine out first. All right, so taking them down and I had like old Hollywood waves. Like those are so pretty. That has to be some of my prettiest waves. I mean, I really, really liked the towel one for sure. Those waves are gorgeous. And the back of my head looked so good. Oh, and I did end up heat styling a tiny, tiny bit on these. You can fry my curling iron out of my cold, dead hands. I love curling irons. It is not surprising to me that I touched these up, but I touched it up so minimally. Those waves, they are so good. Okay, so straight off of it, it was like a little bit uneven and the ends were pretty crazy, can't lie. And then it took us a minute to pick out the right size curling wand to touch up with, I remember that. But then once we did, let's skip ahead to the final afters. Wow, gorgeous, beachy, mermaid, wonderful, goddess, perfection. I mean, the only thing I would change about Anna Laura's hair is just getting it in like maybe with the heat or anything, getting it in a little bit closer to the root, but it's perfect. My waves there look amazing. I forgot how good this turned out. So the OctaCurl. I tried it when I had long hair. I think there are pictures of that in this video. We tried it with short hair, we tried it on Anna's hair, and I've done different curls every time I've done it, and I've loved all of them. It's so easy to use, it's so good. I keep forgetting how much I love it until I can go back and look at the results. I think the biggest thing to learn with the Octo Curl is how to get the ends right, because if you get them all kind of crazy and caught up in the elastics at the end, there's a good chance you're gonna end up with some crazy, crazy ends. But as long as you're willing to use heat to touch up while you learn how to do it correctly, you're gonna be smooth sailing. It's so good. OctaCurl, I'm gonna agree with the title of my video. It goes up at the very top. Oof. I said a whole lot of things. I hope that this was fun for you guys. This was fun for me to take a little journey through my past videos. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your favorite heatless curling method is below and what videos you'd like to see next. If you did enjoy today's video, let me know by hitting the like button. That's how I know that you liked it and it helps to support my channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button to join the Braidaholic family here on Kaylee and Melissa. And if you've been a Braidaholic for a while, go back and watch some old videos. There is some good stuff back there. Like I was re-looking through my catalog I've made some good videos over the years. Just take a little look at it. You know, take a little Braidaholic stroll down memory lane. And all of you guys can hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. But that's it for today. Whether you're old or you're new or you're a casual lurker, thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye. Now let's see if I can get that all back in this drawer. That was fit very precisely. Also, why do I have so many when I only use four? You can pry my curling iron out of my cold day and <laughs> Bathrobe time. All right, peace out, Cub Scouts.